Good morning. Thank you all for being here. It's good that we can gather together to offer our prayers for the soul of Sadie Joseph. I think now is a good time for, for those who would like to present a eulogy to come up uh, and present their eulogy um, before everyone here. here was when we all came together to lay Jiddy to rest. And the most vivid memory I have from that day was when the ceremony was over, is the mic on? No. Is when the ceremony was over and the family was still lingering and chatting together and I walked Siti to the car. And when Siti's ready to go home, Siti's ready to go home. So we walked to the car and she held my arm and we sat together, mostly in silence. It felt like a special moment to share with her. She was someone who had always kind of intimidated me because Siti had strong opinions about things and she would let you know how she felt. But looking back, there wasn't a time that she didn't accept me for who I am even when the decisions I made wouldn't have been her first choice. I think many of us experienced her unconditional love and support, no matter what path our lives took. This quality of hers became more apparent to me when Uncle Sammy shared with me how she had been his protector and had literally helped him survive a very difficult time in his life a time in his high school years when others may have found it difficult to accept someone for not being exactly like them. She accepted him completely and didn't tolerate anyone else not doing the same. Siti never wavered in her complete love and devotion to her children and her grandchildren, standing up for them during their most challenging moments. As her sister Helen told me, when Sadie would look at her children, her eyes were filled with love, and you had no doubt how she felt about them. As sometimes happens when you learn more about someone once, as sometimes happens you learn more about someone once they're gone. I never knew Sidney had dreams of being a voice major at Birmingham Southern College. Although I should have known based on how she led the entire church in every hymn, when no one else could hold her tune or figure out the melody. And I found an even greater admiration for Sitti this week after learning that she cared for her five children while making her way through nursing school, studying each night her sewing machine as her desk. She even earned a scholarship to continue schooling for an additional year, but Jiddy needed help providing for the family, so she began working and continued working for many years all the while making sure her children had everything they needed. Siti would sometimes even hide money from Jiddy here and there to help pay for college fees, wedding receptions, whatever her kids needed. And I love what Uncle Sammy shared with me. He said, most people just remember her career slowing up and her being a little bossy as she aged, but as I see it, she was entitled to it. Mom's lifetime of self-sacrifice made it possible for us to succeed and have a good life. So when people say, well, at least she had a long life, so it's okay. She deserved all of those 90 years and many more for the ones she dedicated to her children. And it was a beautiful thing to witness my dad and his siblings repay that devotion to her as she aged keeping her happy and healthy at home until her final days. I find great peace and comfort in knowing that the moments before Siti passed, she saw the faces and heard the voices of people she loved and cherished dearly. She left this earth knowing how loved she was. 
after that call Annabelle and I had with her, I said, so Annabelle, what was it like talking to Siti? And she said, it was great. You know, it kind of just looked like she was in her own bed at home. And I said, Annabelle, I think that's a perfect way to remember this moment. And I think after Siti spoke to some of her children, she knew it was okay to go. And after all, when Siti was ready to go, she was ready to go. Siti, you will be in our hearts always. We love you. And Uncle Joe wanted me to mention that you still owe him a quarter from the bet you guys made years ago. And also that he will miss you terribly. We all will. In your hands, O oh Lord, we humbly entrust our city. In this life, you embraced her with your tender love. Deliver her now from every evil and bid her eternal rest. The old order has passed away. Welcome her into paradise where there will be no sorrow, no weeping or pain, but fullness of peace and joy with your Son and Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Eric, as you know, is in China, but he will be speaking today via voice message that I will play now. I hate that I couldn't be with you in person, but as we all know, Alright, let's try again. Hey everybody, I hate that I couldn't be with you in person, but as we all know, the world's a bit crazy right now, and a lot of things aren't the way that we thought that they would be, the way that we planned for them to be. I'm glad that I'm still able to share my thoughts and what's in my heart with you guys today. One of the hardest parts of this for me is not going to a place of anger and frustration and rage. That's not what my city would have wanted. And I know that that's not what my city was about. For me, and I know for the rest of us, City was about love. She didn't care. She didn't care who you were, where you were from, gay, straight, somewhere in between. If you were her family, she loved you. There was only a few things that that City couldn't stand and City would not tolerate. And that is facial hair and flip flops. Everything else, hey, you know, we're family. For me, I always knew that if I could find my way to City's house, just to sit, have a snack, drink something, have some fruit, that when I left, everything would be okay because that's what cities do. They, they make everything okay. They make you feel safe again. And that's because they love you. The city did, you know. And I know that even though I am on the other side of the planet. Every time I step out of my door in the morning, my heart, my body, my soul is filled with the love of my family and my city. And that's never going to change. Because the strength that she had and the love that she gave everyone in her life, it gives me hope that one day the world will be okay again. 
capital city. I'm sorry that I couldn't be closer, but know that every day I think about you and that I will always carry you in my heart. Goodbye, city. I love you. Good morning. An old friend of mine, dear friend and founder of the Lebanese Food Festival, Paul Bolas, said in a speech one time, the Lebanese people are made up of three things, our faith, our food, and our family. This perfectly describes our mother. Born February 9th, the feast of St. Marin, she relished every banquet we had at church. Beverly Kimes always had her on a table right up front, and she was holding court. We always celebrate Mass with a big banquet, and Mom loved her church and loved her priests. Mom would not only go to one Mass on the weekend, sometimes sneak away for two, but daily Mass as well. When limited to live stream, she watched every day, and she would watch three on the weekend, even though I'd say, Mom, you already saw five o'clock mass. Well, eight and 10.30 were different. So she was married on July 11th, 1950, to my father, Carlo, from Valdosta, Georgia. And just honestly, recently, July 11th, 1950, was a Tuesday. Who gets married on a Tuesday? She said, oh yes. It was watermelon season in Valdosta. And that date, they had melons in the field. They weren't gonna miss a weekend picking melons. Who knew? She was active in her church her whole life, starting in the choir as a teenager with her brothers and sisters. And way back, she and some other young mothers formed a society called the Young Matrons Society. And our beautiful white altar, if you look on the bottom, they cooked and cooked until they paid for that altar. Eventually, she moved up to the Ladies' Altar Society and was actually attending meetings up until a month ago. Again, holding court with all the younger ladies. She was a lifetime member of NAM, the National Apostle of Maronite, and a perpetual member of the Order of St. Charbel that supports our seminarians and our retired priests. Lebanese mothers are legendary for their food. My mother has taught many of the next generation how to make many Lebanese delicacies. If you walked into her house, you were never asked if you were hungry. That was an insult. You were simply fed. Of course, did you already eat at your mom's house? Was a common phrase I got from Diane. Food is how they showed their love. Mom always made sure the priests and visiting bishops and dignitaries always had a tray of sweets up until just a month or two ago when Bishop Elias was here. Mom was born from Sam and Lily Boackle and they had eight children. Mom was the oldest Boackle sister and when those sisters all got together, ain't nothing but trouble coming. She loved her sisters and brothers, especially Uncle Joe, the youngest and prettiest, that would fix anything for her. She sang in the choir with Uncle Hale and Uncle Naim. Aunt Regina was over most Sundays for mass and lunch and reading that magical bulletin that I managed to print for her every week, even though they don't print them anymore. And she was a cheerful visitor. Aunt Kadimi always loved to come and visit and always pet Mom up. She was proud of Aunt Helen, her education, her ability to play piano. Holidays at the Boackles always meant Sunday best, coat and tie, and amazing food. Professional pictures, not homemade pictures, professional pictures followed. Vacations for us centered around family, whether it be Valdosta and the smell of quail suppers, thick sliced bacon, 
riding horses, coon dogs chasing ducks in Watermelon, or in Hattiesburg, with the Big Curry Clan, and of course, Aunt Kadimi and more good food. Yes, for our family, Phyllis was her medical advocate, keeping dozens of medications straight every day, three times a day. Lila kept her dressed in style and made the best waffles and pancakes on Monday mornings. Sam was a precious baby boy and she loved him and Dan and mom was so proud of their success. Leo was always up for a Braves game and a burger with her on a Saturday night. She loved her children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren, especially little Sadie, her namesake. As for me, my mother was always the one I wanted to please, <clears throat> like many Lebanese sons, occasionally telling her good news before Diane, which was a big mistake. My father I feared and I respected, but I always had just one thing to drive my success, was to make my mother proud. I can certainly testify to Sadie's love for the liturgy. When some people get together, they talk about the latest episode of The Mandalorian, or whatever it may be. When we got together, we talked about the latest episode of the liturgy from St. Elias Church, and those were delightful conversations. I, I just wanted to point out, I know there's a lot of people, a lot of people who would really love to be here right now, and it would be something of a cliche to say that they're here with us in spirit, but I'd like to point out that in our, in our faith, we believe in something called the communion of the saints, and that we are united with one another even out of our bodies. And so when I say that they are with us here in spirit, I mean that, and it's true, that there are many people who are here present with us praying for Sadie Joseph who are here in spirit. And we'll go into the myrrh and incense hymn at this time, to the glory and honor of the most holy trinity. Myrrh and incense let us take, and a sweet remembrance make of souls who sleep with the faith that they will arise. Who with your true body, Lord, have received your blood, adored in part to these faithful souls the heavenly prize. Righteous souls the faith have kept, with the hope of rising, slept, expecting your great reward in heaven above, which has not been seen or heard, nor to man has it occurred what God has prepared for those who yearn for his love. To your judgment, Lord, arise, those unjust before your eyes receiving the punishment that sin made their due. But the good shall hear your voice, and in rising shall rejoice, receiving a spotless crown and life ever new. Abraham expired and slept, and with sorrow Isaac wept, because that the dead should rise was shrouded and dim. But to Moses God appeared, saying those who are revered for justice and holiness, though dead live in him. See the treasure ship with these, sailing over stormy seas, the treasure within her grows, her treasure is Christ. This ship is the full of grace. Through her Jesus joined our race to give true life to the dead. Her prayer has sufficed. We remember now the church, fount of all for which men search, and Mary our mother and the mother of God. We remember all our dead, by your precepts they are led, they died in your hope, O oh Lord, please spare them your rod.
For those who believed in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, death becomes, as they taste it, eternal life. For those who believed in Christ, the Son of God, death becomes, as they taste it, eternal life. For those who believed in the mystery of the Trinity, death becomes, as they taste it, eternal life. I prayed in the holy temple, and behold, I am going out to journey. On that road taken by all generations, O priests, remember me in the sanctuary, and you deacons before the altar. Pray for me, O people, that his grace may be my companion, and his mercy be upon me. Assemble, my brothers and sisters, and give me peace, for in peace am I now and will be forever. Give me peace, then go in peace. Pray for me, brothers and sisters, that I may go and be accepted. In this am I saddened, that I departed from you. Pray for me, brothers and sisters, that I may go and be accepted. The body reaches the grave, and the soul goes to its Lord. Pray for me, brothers and sisters, that I may go and be accepted. Bodies and souls together shout, Blessed is he who came to save us, and will come to raise us. Behold, O Lord, your command has been fulfilled according to your will. From dust you are, and to dust you return, yet you shall be born anew. My brothers and sisters, place the stone and seal the grave. Pray for me that I may go and be accepted. Behold, O oh sister, we place the stone and seal the grave. May the cross of Christ be your companion. Have mercy on me, O oh God. Wipe out my offenses. Let me inherit your heavenly kingdom and have mercy on me. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, O Son of God. Make your servant who sleeps in your hope worthy to enter paradise and have mercy on her. Against you only have I sinned. Because of your Father's love, do not bring her to judgment. Place her at your right side and have mercy on her. Behold, you are pleased with sincerity of heart. May she dwell in the garden of paradise, for she is your servant who sleeps with faith in your hope. Let me hear the sounds of joy, O Son of God. Your judgment is fearsome, and your punishment is severe. In the mercy which you sent for our salvation, forgive your servant. A clean heart create for me, O Son of God. May your cross be a bridge for her. Through it, may she cross over the tent to the place of fear, to the abode of life. Give me back the joy of your salvation. O Lord of mercy, in your grace, Grant her mercy and life. Deliver her from torment and have mercy on her. Free me, O Lord. May he who received baptism from John, the son of Zechariah, invite you to paradise. Go now in peace. For you are not pleased with sacrifice. May he who distributed his holy body within the church forgive you in his mercy. Go in peace. Be bountiful, O Lord. May he who was born of the Blessed Virgin raise you from the grave. Go in peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. At all times we give thanks, worship, and praise to the hidden mystery, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now and forever and ever, may he who raises the dead by the power of his word call you and raise you up. Go in peace. May the merciful one who had pity on the thief on the cross be your companion. Go in peace. O Lord, grant rest and consolation to your handmaid. She worshiped you, and with true faith sleeps in your hope. May she stand at your right on the day of your divine manifestation, and with the righteous and the just offer you praise. May the dew of mercy showered by the Father and sprinkled over the young men in the furnace of corruption overshadow the departed. In the dark depths of the netherworld, may it pardon the faults of his handmaid, who sleeps in his hope, and enable him to inherit and enable her to inherit the everlasting kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. And let perpetual light shine upon her. May Sadie's soul and all the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Amen. Spirit. Amen. Shepherds quake, 
at the side. Glory stream from heaven afar. Heavenly hosts sing Alleluia. Christ the Savior is born. Christ the Savior is born. Silent night, holy night, Son of God, love's pure light, radiant beams from thy holy face, with the dawn of redeeming grace. Jesus, Lord, at thy birth, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth. Wow, what a beautiful service. This is what a celebration is all about. And even though we got Christmas just right around the corner, we can also say that we can celebrate also eternal life. On behalf of the management and staff at John Rideout Sandwood Chapel, I would personally like to say thank you. I'd personally like to say thank you for everyone that have participated in this service today. The officiants, the soloists, family. I'd like to thank you for allowing us to have your loved one in our care. We believe in prayer. And we'll be praying for you for days, weeks, months, maybe years to come. We're here for you as long as you need our support. For those that have you have traveled from near and far, we pray for your safe return, wherever those destinations may lead you. This now concludes the service for Mrs. Sadie Boakle Joseph. You may return to your vehicles at your convenience. May God bless you all. Thank you.